Alright, here we are. I'm going to do this live, I guess, instead of showing a wiring diagram after the video. I'm showing that the uh, starting and charging system page of the RX-8 factory service manual for the wiring diagram um, and show you kind of how the power is supposed to get to the starter and what's kind of going on with this car right now. So if you can see this well enough without getting too much motion sickness, you got the battery here on the left. That feeds positive battery power into the main amp on the top, which is a, or the main fuse, which is 120 amp fuse, ignition key, 15 amp, accessory, 30 amp. Now, if you follow that down, that accessory 30 amp is a red wire that goes into the starter relay, and that's a positive battery power that goes into that. Now, the other wire on the top, if you follow that back, it's the light green and red there. That comes up and over into these, the starter interlock switch or the transmission range switch depending on which, man, which transmission you have in your car. So this one's a manual transmission, it's got a starter interlock switch. Uh, it's got a white and a blue that goes into it and then when it's depressed it's got a light green and red that comes out sends positive power out into the starter relay here. Now to even get to that you have to go through the ignition switch first. So when the ignition switch goes to start right here you hit start, sends positive power out. It'll go this way for the manual transmission into this white and blue. So long as your clutch is depressed, it'll close this circuit. It'll send the positive power out to the light green and red. The light green and red will come down here, go into the starter relay. And then theoretically, the starter relay is getting positive power from the starter interlock switch. It's getting positive power from the accessory fuse that should be good from the battery, which is always hot. Um, and then it'll come out here. Now, if you look, it should be sending positive power, I believe, to the PCM here, and then it should also be sending positive power out to the starter, I think it would be the solenoid if I'm correct, um, to send power to the starter to actually spin the starter. So this car is having an issue with it's getting power from the battery through the accessory fuse into the starter relay. It's getting power from the ignition switch out to the starter interlock relay into the starter relay and it is not sending power out to the actual starter itself and I'm not sure if it's sending power out to the PCM. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how I kind of tested this. Um, it's not that hard. Um, I'm going to show it from the inside of the car here first. We're going to test this circuit first which is the basically the clutch switch. Um, it's on the back side of the clutch, so when the clutch is pushed in, it's pushing this plunger in and sending power into the starter relay to send power into the starter. And then when it's out, um, it is not closing the circuit here and it is not sending power in here, so your starter would not spin and it would not start the car. So the easy way that I kind of did it was from the driver's seat by myself, I can sit here with the battery hooked up and if you look you can see my snap on uh, uh, what do they call that multimeter there that's plugged or that's poked into the uh, starter interlock switch position in the relay and so I'm gonna scoot forward here I don't have a seat in here right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the key to on if you look that's still off now if I turn the key to start it's not sending any power to that position because it'll glow red just like this. So when you see it glowing red like that, that's when I have the clutch depressed. In, out, in, out. So I know that that position in the relay is getting positive 12 volt battery power when I'm pushing the clutch in in here. So I know that I can eliminate that specific problem from my starting problem in this car. Now basically I've eliminated this one if I go out here right now, I'm going to turn the... Actually, I don't even need to turn the key on. I can leave the key off. I can take my little booklet here. Step out the car. Now the starter relay is this little guy right here that I've got this stabbed into. Now if you look, I'm going to take this out. This is a four position switch, or four position relay. It's got top, bottom, left, and right. If you read in the service manual, it shows it according to top, bottom, left, and right. 
So you got white and green on the top, light green and red on the bottom, blue and red on the left, red on the right. The uh, blue and red is what this little fella, here, let me see if I can grab my big flashlight if it's around here. Um, not sure where I put it. Anyways, the uh, blue and red that's on the left there, that's what actually feeds the starter. So when you have positive power going to that, the starter will turn. So what I've got is a jumper cable coming out to here. So this gray wire, as soon as I touch this to positive, it'll spin the starter. Now, that's all fine and dandy, but I still need to figure out why I'm not getting power to that switch. So then let's go and say, okay, that one needs to have positive power going to it in order to get uh, the starter to spin. In order to get positive power into that, you need to have positive power into the other one. So the one that we tested originally was this bottom one. This bottom one is the light green and red, which is the one that comes from the starter analog switch, which is the clutch switch. Now, the blue and red needs the positive to get the power to the starter. The other one you can check here is red which is on the right side over here, coming from the accessory fuse. If you look, that one is getting 14 volts right now because I have the battery charger hooked up um, with a medium charge. So therefore I know that the starter relay is getting 12 volt, at least 12 volt battery power from the accessory fuse and it's getting power from the starter interlock switch. So now I need to go through and figure out whether the PCM is sending positive battery power to the starter relay when I try to start it. So if I stab this in here, uh, I should be able to take the same test that I did on the last time. Go in here, I'll depress the clutch switch again just so I know that that power is going to that pin, even though it doesn't really matter at this point. We're gonna push the clutch in, key to on, key to start, I'm not getting power from the ECU to the starter relay. So I know that the wire that comes from the PCM into the starter relay is not getting the proper power that it should be getting. So that means my problem must be somewhere in the PCM because it is not sending that power to the relay. And if it was, then the relay would actually work and it would send power to the starter. So now I'm gonna have to go through, try to figure out in the PCM what the, uh, I guess what the next step is. Um, I did actually page through here, the PCM, if you look, I'll show it again one more time. PCM comes from section B-1C, it's a white green wire. Comes in from A03, that's the starter relay there, sorry. Um, goes from section B-1C, the white green wire. So it is not on this page. Um, it is not on this page, I believe. It is right here. Starter relay, ST, section A is the one we just came from. Number one, white green into pin 5A of the PCM. So now I'm gonna have to go through and figure out what the starter relay needs in order to send power out to the starter relay. Uh, and that's going to be an entirely different issue, I believe. So I tried to keep this kind of simple and short, just a quick update on the uh, progress of the RX-8 here. Um, it's going to be a bit of a battle uh, in order to figure out why the starter in this car is not spinning due to the starter relay not working. Um, I have absolutely no idea what's going on with it. This is my first time working on these. Um, thanks for your patience, guys. I appreciate it. The other issue, too, that I'll show is that if you look at the dome light in here, they actually left it on. I left it on. Um, if you plug the ABS in for some reason, just do this. starts doing that clicking thing again. Now, 
can't really see that it's flashing that. Oh, you can see that it's flashing in this light maybe a little bit. No. I can feel that it's actually... I can, might be able to hear that difference a little bit. It is clicking the uh, relay here which is actually the EGI relay. So there's a short somewhere in that ABS system that ties into the lights and the EGI system. So that is going to be a bit of a pain. Here you go, this is unplugged, so it's not clicking this relay anymore. None of these relays are clicking. As soon as I plug this back in, this one starts clicking. And I think there's a lock solenoid in that back passenger door that also is clicking that I need to figure out what it is that's tied into the stupid ABS thing and what's short now because that's driving me insane. Uh, but thanks again for watching guys, I appreciate it. It's going to be a long hard process I think, but I at least got to hear the motor turn over a little bit today. Sprayed some uh, two stroke oil in there with some gas and some uh, MMO uh, and some other two stroke, was two different types of two stroke, MMO and gas going in there. Um, just to try to lube up the cylinder or the uh, chambers a little bit not cylinders the uh, Rotor housings just a little bit in order to get it lubed up in order to kind of protect the seals I guess while it sits for a little bit longer. Uh, I didn't know if there's anything in there anyways So I'm gonna have to go through and kind of do another check through um, maybe a different day and see where I'm sitting with it and try to go from there. Uh, thanks again for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, we will talk to you at a different date, hopefully with some more progress made.